In our program tonight, stark realities are facing the South African Communist Party. Bantu Holomisa and the UDM put their cards on the table. Discrimination in the workplace outlawed by new legislation. And we speak to the First Lady of Ghana. That's our lineup. Good evening and thank you for joining us at this late hour. I'm Phil Molefe. Parliament is still in recess, but the table has already been set for a hectic session when MPs return in two weeks' time for the final leg of this year's legislative program. More on that later. Tonight, on camera focuses on two political parties that made headline news during the past week. The South African Communist Party has had to take a critical look at its future political role within the tripartite alliance. While the United Democratic Movement is eyeing the National Party status as official opposition. <laughs> At its 10th Congress this week, President Nelson Mandela and his deputy Thabo Mbeki lambasted the South African Communist Party for its criticism of the government's macroeconomic policy, better known as GEM. This came amidst much communist hand-wringing and a debate over the role of the party in the ANC COSATU SACP alliance and its future path. Producers Rehat Desai and Nick Hoffmeyer compiled this report for on camera. Congress opened with the communist anthem, the Internationale before delegates got down to the business of dealing with central issues such as their alliance with the ANC and government economic policy. I think one of the criticisms against the Communist Party is that it has been silent at critical moments when workers were confronted with major struggles. And secondly, is that the party was unable to clarify its positions on day-to-day -day policy issues. As a result, people would not know the difference between the party and the ANC. Maybe over the years, because of the necessity to prioritize the national liberation struggle, we never really quite adequately looked at specific forms of socialist politics, particularly during a period like this. There are real policy debates, real discussions, and the outcome of those debates are about real life. They're not, they're not just about putting a pretty face and hoping to win elections or do better in elections. They're, they have real consequences, the debates and discussions that happen in the alliance. We do want to admit that indeed we've had some weaknesses in the party. And uh, it may be true that uh, we have not publicly uh, condemned some of the uh, policy positions that government has adopted in the past. Many of the leaders, for example, have said that the ANC is a working class movement. I agree, it is a working class movement. But its leadership is not working class. Um, and it's certainly not adopting policies that are in the interest of the working class. And I don't think we should be afraid to say so. There are many communists in Parliament, and there has been some controversy stirred up over the party's role and impact on this institution. One of the things we fought for, uh, and one of the things so many of our people died for, was to democratize the most important political institutions in our country. Now, quite clearly, Parliament is one of the most important political institutions we have. Parliament is a, potentially a very, very important site. Currently in South Africa, what Parliament is, is it's not that at all. What Parliament is, is, is an important negotiating forum between a range of minority parties, which essentially represent constituencies that benefited from the apartheid past, that are active in the new democratic institutions with a view to slowing down uh, the pace of change. Um, but we're very clear in our minds that the four cabinet ministers currently who are communists or the 80-odd communists who are in parliament are there because they were elected on an ANC mandate and ticket. So their, their governmental discipline, uh, their parliamentary discipline has to be an ANC discipline. You can't have two or three separate disciplines operating simultaneously. But as communists in parliament, as ACP members still act in their individual capacities. You know the basic needs of the people. 
when they raise those matters, they raise them as communists. And uh, there are progressive uh, laws that have been adopted where some of our comrades from the party were quite vociferous, raising issues very, very sharply. You can't uh, allow governments to institutionalize uh, capital punishment. When we spoke about such things as uh, the choice uh, of the termination of pregnancy, party comrades were making inputs there. Lenin once said, the only purpose for communists to be in a parliamentary system is to push communist positions. If that's not happening, then there needs to be a rethink. Government's growth, employment, and redistribution policy gear is premised on the belief that private investment is the key to economic growth and that redistribution will follow from this. Of course, capitalists and other people who are pro-capital, they, they are trying to say, you know, the route that we are taking is the only route, there is no other, other alternative. We're questioning that. That is why also we are questioning gear, you know, that gear in essence, you know, will tend to actually strengthen the capitalist forces and an elite, and it's not actually going to lead to the transformation, economic transformation, particularly of the lives of ordinary people. Similarly, that is how, therefore, we would understand black economic empowerment, that it, it just doesn't equal creating a new black business elite. Primarily black economic empowerment should actually be empowering the majority of ordinary black people in this country. Unless you assert this class character, because to talk about race only, much as it is important, we know that that is the major issue at the moment. But to disconnect it from class is not going to take us to where we want to go to. The ESCOP Amendment Act ushers in a very dangerous process. Two areas where we were, were totally opposed. The first one is incorporation of ESCOM in terms of the Company Act 1973. And the question of making ESCOM a tax and a dividend paying utility. We're opposing these two provisions because if you incorporate ESCOM in terms of the Companies Act, it means that then it will have shares, it may easily be listed in the stock exchange. And it prepares it for privatization. If you look at the Central Committee of COSATO that met in the last week in June, that Central Committee took a clear stand, one, on the ESCOM Amendment Act itself and on broader anti-privatization campaign. And that campaign is going to grow into a very aggressive anti-privatization campaign. Gear is just a, a label. Uh, what we must be dealing with is the content. Uh, we must deal with the question of the implication of the aggressive cutting back of the deficit as it is manifesting, manifesting itself in the education sector, in the social welfare sector. And if we deal with those issues, that you cannot continue to allow education to drift into a crisis and engage at that level, as Satu did a few, few weeks ago. And the question of looking into privatization, the, 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 the campaign around ESCOM, around water privatization, is actually engaging gear without shouting gear, because once you shout gear all the time, people close up. And now once people close up, the interaction becomes counterproductive and useless. Now, instead of shouting gear, close, just leave the title gear, engage with the issues. If Kosatu, if the South African Communist Party leave the internal structures of the organization and go public and not only attack what we consider to be a fundamental policy of the organization, but ridicule it. They must be aware of the implications. 
I want to tell you that a gear is the fundamental policy of the African National Congress. We are not going to change it because of your pressure. We will not do that. You must choose what role you want to play. We do not just represent the workers organizing trade unions. We represent the entire country. And we are convinced that this is the strategy that eventually will put our economy on a sound basis, which will make it internationally competitive. We have no hesitation about that. And I want you to know that the gear is the fundamental policy of this organization. And we are not going to change it. The idea that any of our organizations can build itself on the basis of scavenging on the carcass of a serviced ANC is wrong in the extreme. This is so because the death of the ANC, which will not happen, would also mean the death of the rest of the progressive movement of our country. The RDP is a program for transformation. It has touched a number of areas that needs to be attended to. All that was needed was to create clear implementation programs to operationalize RDP. And GEAR is not that program. The, the, the commanding heights of the economy, certain sections of the economy, must remain in state hands. One of the considerations is that formations that actually participate in, in the so-called black economic empowerment groupings, clear social ownership must be part of it. Otherwise, we're going to create what we call an Irish coffee scenario. You see, that Irish coffee scenario means that you will have your, 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 your coffee at the bottom, black at the bottom, with a white cream. That means the actual cream of the economy remains primarily in white hands. And you'll have sprinkles of chocolate on top of the cream, which means that very few blacks are going to be stinking rich. In the past, tensions in the alliance were more easily resolved because of a common struggle against apartheid. But now, a growing divergence of interest is raising new tensions within the alliance. There were instances where there were tensions in the alliance. And uh, the practice was always to sit down and discuss those tensions and iron them out. Finding each other, Communist Party, Kosato, ANC, at the level of leadership remains important, OK? But uh, we may not always be able to find each other, OK? Uh, and in that case, we cannot say that we're going to cancel out uh, uh, class struggle simply because uh, we, we, we cannot find each other at the level of leadership. Our premise should be the fundamental importance of the alliance. Okay? That even if we are forced to engage in various forms in trying to push for the particular orientation of the alliance, we should always, I would argue, understand that presently the ANC-led alliance is, should be sacrosanct. Because I think that uh, uh, to build a movement like this, this movement took a long time to build. Okay? This movement carries the hopes of the people. It also depends on the balance of forces within the ANC itself in terms of ideas, you know, which ideas and route becomes dominant, you know. I, I, I think that we should look at it uh, both ways. But it's difficult to tell, for instance, that if the ANC were to become a fully-fledged bourgeois, capitalist party exactly when we would break but if it becomes that a party of the elite the bourgeoisie standing for unbridled capitalism then we will definitely break as the communist party we'll have nothing to do with an ANC like that when we have a gear that is not a common strategic perspective with a, a socialist perspective comrades must be honest about that and ask themselves what that means for the future of the alliances both as well as the future of the party there are many comrades um, that believe that the SACP must be a communist party. It must be a socialist party if it's going to uh, live up to that name. And that means adopting a program, having a leadership, and, and acting um, as serious socialists and communists. In other words, fighting capital, trying to fight for policies that are in the interest of the working class and poor. I think there are many comrades that feel as though that's not possible. And in fact, there are other comrades that feel as though they don't even want to do it. They've given up on the battle. But they still like to be called communists because 
it is something that gives them respect and legitimacy. If you adopt an anti-capitalist struggle, if you adopt a proactive struggle that speaks to, you're, be you're going to begin to open up the space for building socialism now. The call for a more independent profile for the SACP has brought political differences within the party to the surface. The leadership contest at the Congress revolved around these tensions. The conference must begin to redefine the role of the leadership of the party. The Central Committee, the Politburo. Are we electing people only to attend those formal meetings? Or are we electing people to serve as organizers of the party, to move around? and build the collapsing party structures. And I think that, frankly, you need a leadership that is going to do a couple of things. And just to mention them briefly, one, that is actually going to lead this massive task of creating the work, making the working class to be a political, conscious political force for itself, to be able to defend its interests. Secondly, to be committed to actually be developing organs of people's power or popular power massive participation, cater, cater development, you know, and of course, you know, asserting the independence of the Communist Party. This 10th Congress must come up with a clear program. If we don't do that, we might as well fold up. And I don't think that actually the Communist Party will fold, you know, because I think we do have a future as the political vanguard and leader of South Africa's working class. If the party is to carve out such a role for itself, it has to face up to some stark choices. It can stay in the alliance and face the prospect of being a diluted force. Or it can leave and test its real strength. Oh, no.